Hey guys, and welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this bistro table out of scrap wood that I found in my garage. I started by using these one by four pieces of wood that you can get at any big box store. I had about seven to eight of them, and which I feel that if I put them all together, it'll make a nice size square table. So I laid them out on the ground to see which ones were a little wonky or bowed that I can take those out, which we'd have problems with later on. So you see this space in between the boards. This is gonna be one of those places where a lot of crumbs or things will get stuck and it's very frustrating to clean. So an easy trick to take down um, to make the boards fit together better is to take an eighth of an inch off and I use my table saw to do this. And I do it on both sides. I also do this with any two by boards that I get. Um, they have that round edge from the manufacturer, but to make them look a little bit more high end, a little more square, you just take an eighth of an inch off each side. So as you can see, the boards will butt up against each other a lot better. And when you add some glue in between there, you have a nice good joint. I'm gonna be using my Craig jig to put in pocket holes about every six to eight inches to bring these boards I begin by putting my pocket hole screws, one and a quarter inch screws into these boards. You'll see me flipping the boards up. I like to see if there's gonna be any um, issues with sometimes, sometimes when you're using thinner boards, sometimes the screw tends to have a little mind of its own and goes a little bit through it, but I keep popping it up to make sure that no screws are being seen on the other side. If you notice, I have a piece of wood on the end of the table that is screwed down. That helps me push against the boards as I'm screwing them in so that the boards don't move around. Sometimes when you're doing pocket hole screws, the boards tend to pop up a bit. Sometimes you can use a clamp that the Craig jig gives you, or you can do what I'm doing by putting a piece of wood at the end, screwing it down. I have a wood table, so I screwed it down to the table. I added two pieces of plywood to the back just to give it some extra support. These are only one by four boards, but I was trying to use my stash, what I have um, as far as wood goes. Now to the post. I use a four by four piece of um, Douglas fir. And how I mark the center is I just go from corner to corner and the point where they intercept is where my center is. So I decided to drill, um, sorry, draw a box around the 4x4 post so that it would give me a, um, a better idea when I go down to glue it where I'm going to put my screws in. So 
when I glue it and I put this down, I actually put in some uh, screws temporarily just to hold it so that when I flip it over, I can put the screws into the top. And then we have a nice tight bond there. And then I remove the screws after that I'm holding it on with. Uh, you'll see that a little later. So here I am just putting in those one inch screws just to hold on. I don't go all the way through. I just probably scratch the surface of the board of the table underneath so that when I flip it over, it'll stay in place and I don't have to remeasure then. Now I'm gonna be making the most simple base you can think of. It is just a bunch of two by fours. You can make them as long or deep as you like. I tried to keep them a little bit on the shorter side so that you don't, um, that the bottom of the table when you're sitting at it, you're not kicking the base of the table. So I start by taking four 10 inch two by fours and basically follow them around in a circle. Does that make sense? Put one two by four, and then you go on the inside of the next two by four. You'll see how what I'm doing when I start drilling these in. This creates a pretty good base and it's pretty stable. I just continue turning around in a circle, going on the inside of each board. And then you have this really great base. It's kind of cool looking too. I'm taking out my one and a half inch screws that I put in. We don't need those anymore. Everything is all screwed in and tight now. I thought the table needed just a little bit of character underneath the inside, underside of the table. Um, so I decided to take uh, two 45s uh, at opposing angles and just creating a, basically like a cleat underneath. There is no science to making these. Um, they just go in the opposite directions and it just depends on how big you want or how wide you want your angle to be. For these, I'm using one inch finishing nails. When you're putting finishing nails in the sides of a thinner piece and then a thicker piece, you want to go to the chunkier part, not to penetrate all the way through to the other side of the table. You're going to have to use your judgment on that based on uh, how long your nails are.
I thought that the edges of the table needed a bit of finishing, so I decided to put a trim along the four sides of the table. I started just with one by twos and held them up to the edge and measured them that way instead of measuring each piece at a time. I gave the top a quick sand and it was time to stain. And here's how my table turned out. I hope you like it. And if you like this content, I hope that you'll consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.